My name is Abeka Salmin Abdallah. I'm a Kenyan. I'm Alexandra and I'm from Romania. Diplomat TV's young ambassadors Abeka and Alex are going to find the answer to the question, who was Lambertus Theodorus van Cleef? Theodorus van Cleef? Who is he? You've never heard about him? No. Let's take you back to the year 1842. In 1842, Lambertus Theodorus van Cleef founded his distillery in The Hague. Nowadays, we here in the Netherlands can drink our water from the tap, but until 1874, the residents of The Hague had no access to fresh drinking water and tapped their water out of the canals, which were also the open sewer of the city. In order to disinfect this dirty water, it was completely normal, even for kids, to mix the dirty canal water with alcohol before drinking it. When one would need medicines, one would often just go to their local distiller, since medicines were a combination of alcohol and medicinal herbs and plants. Von Kleef became the last distillery in The Hague and closed their doors in 1986. However, in 1995, Van Cleef reopened after an extensive renovation. Nowadays, Van Cleef on the Lange Beestenmark in the old city center is a museum shop and it is the last place in The Hague that reminds us of these times. Hello. Middag. Middag. What can so. I do? How may I help you? We would like to find out lots of information about the history of this place. No problem at all. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Um, but to understand the history of the place and the history of the taste, we first need to try a little something. It's from The Hague, called Krade Bachat. And then I can explain everything about the place, the history, uh, our national drink, Geneva. But first a drink. That's how we work. Is this the one you used to give kids? Well, we used to give kids alcohol as well because there was no, was no access to fresh drinking water. But nowadays in Holland, no more alcohol for kids. So I'll take some special items to explain you a bit more about the history of this place. Okay, let's have a seat here. Thank you. Here in the old city centre, we used to have, within a walking distance, 14 distilleries, a lot of breweries. And there were so many, because without alcohol it was impossible to survive. One of the problems being the water. Fresh drinking water in a city came from the canal, it was dirty, it had to be disinfected with something alcoholic. But then, I have some labels here of products that you might not expect to find in a distillery. For instance, this. You see here, Van Cleef, The Hague but fabric of syrups as well, lemonades. And if you can make of all these different fruits a liqueur, it's no problem to make a, little, a lemonade either. So um, it was produced in the distilleries as a side product. And to that time, still reminds us these little things. You see here, it says Van Cleef and Sun, mm -hmm. yeah. steam distillery, mm -hmm. the anchor. Yeah. And it also says lemonade factory. I'll open one for you. This is antique, so I'm not going to open many. This is a real straw. A real straw. In Dutch, it's called riet, the plant growing down the water. I here have another one, which might surprise you a little bit. Look at this. But this is all the cologne. It's perfume. And perfume, of course, is made of alcohol, so that was produced in the distilleries as well. And if you ever need to explain the importance of alcohol, I have a very small book which illustrates it perfectly. This is the first telephone book ever issued in The Hague. And in 1883, you can only call locally. Less than 200 people had a connection. Most important people in this book. And I'll show you something. Here, you find the advertisement of Van Cleef. And this is the telephone number. Can you tell us a bit about your neighbor? Like many old alcoholic beverages, Geneva as well started off as a medicine. Up there, you see young and old Geneva, and those are the most known Genevers in Holland, but the difference between the two of them is not as the world would suspect age, but it's the production process. Next to the old Geneva, you see Korenwijn, and 
it's a bit up high, so I already have one here, prepared as we are today. Um, did you do the raw herring, the fish that we eat like this? No, yeah. Yes? Yeah, but I never had the, the cordon vine. Well, that's no. the tradition, the fish has to swim, so after eating that, we take a short cordon vine. Now, I have a very important question. I know we're in a distillery for your neighbor, and I see gin, a lot of gin, on your top shelf over there. What's the gin doing there? Well, I'm so glad you asked that question. I was hoping for it. You know, a lot of people think that we Dutch took the gin from the UK. And in 1688, you had in the UK the Glorious Revolution. The last Catholic king, James II, was preceded by his eldest daughter Mary. And Mary is Protestant and married to a Dutch man. He was stadtholder here. We know him as William III. In the UK, they know the same man as William of Orange. So the Genever was then introduced in the UK. And you're already having a bit of trouble saying the ge, so imagine a Brit saying that. Um, so short for Genevers became gen in English gem. And that is the gin we know today. This is a very interesting one. Are you trying to say Dutch were good in discovery of alcohol or something? Well, like that? actually. And what transpired? What made the Dutch realize all this? As probably you already know, the Dutch are good at making money. So if making money has something to do with alcohol, which it has, because you know you can sell something, then the Dutch are quite quickly to find out how. Here we have a bottle that we made to remember 200 years of monarchy. So in 1813, when Napoleon was defeated and William I was in exile in the UK, he came back and he landed on the beach in Scheveningen. And the Dutch people might recognize this character, and this is Harry from The Hague, and we made this bottle together with a cartoonist in The Hague, uh, Marnix Rup, and he is the father of Harry from The Hague. And I'm doing this in Haags, not in Dutch, but I will translate. Wat een kakka, zullen we het schaminkel terug in zee gooien? So, what a snob is that William who's coming back. Shall we throw him back into the sea? And then we have this Harry from The Hague who says, Kom doen, What are you coming to do? And then we have this boat with the officials and they say, aan de grond, which means the king has landed, but it also means it's getting cold. And then he's falling overboard and he says, Is that Haagse humor? Is that humor in The Hague? And then we have William here, just arriving on the beach of Scheveningen, and he says, Wordt het zo'n koninkrijk? Doet mij dan wat te zuipen? Is it going to be this kind of a kingdom? Then pour me a drink. And then here we have Maxima and William Alexander. They're waiting for William to arrive. And William Alexander here, he says, Opatje, Grandpa. And Maxima, our current queen, she says, I like a beetje dom. Are you more interested in sweet things or strong things or what do you what do you like? I have strawberry, forest fruit, roses, raspberry, pear, cherry, lime, mandarin, butterscotch, caraway seed, anise, orange bitter, uh, chocolate, peppermint, ginger, vanilla cream, coffee, almond, hazelnut cream, walnut, uh, licorice. Anise? Anise? Anise. So many people, so many different tastes, you know. The crew. You're not like gonna leave us has. alone. Well, you actually, don't twist me on, you're right. So that. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. <laughs> that was nice, wasn't it? Yeah, it was really nice. Talking, thinking of that, what do you know about Mexico? <laughs> Tequila, sombreros, anything else? <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Thanks for watching Diplomat TV. For any feedback, ideas, or suggestions about our program, please email us at contact at diplomattv.com.